Okay, I think I have it recording now. Um, can I, are we, can we go on? I think Sebastian no, has, a, I think Sebastian has a presentation. Oh. Oh. Okay, hi everyone. I'm a member of the team of the Mr. Amin Challenge. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, yes? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Sorry. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Let's share. Okay. The, an organization that seeks to make important changes. So, the innovation can come from anywhere especially from the least expected places. Such, organiza such organizations create a moving part in the restructure that, like a crack, allows new creators and their ideas to enter. That's the poetry of, of, of organizations that, that seek to bring significant changes in the world. Catalyst in the Cardano ecosystem in general is fundamental Fundamentally, an organization of creators and innovators. Not only needs them, it feeds on them. It's their main raw material. Therefore, it can afford to have a way to capture the curve balls. It can succumb. It can succumb. That's why a challenge like the miscellaneous team, cha uh, miscellaneous challenge exists. The challenge is designed to capture interesting and valuable projects that don't currently fit into their challenges. The only constraint to solving a proposal in the challenge is that the proposal needs to be somehow related to Cardano. Why is important? Why it's important it to enable great ideas to be found, to be founded, even if, if they don't, don't fit any other challenges. But why is important to the current ecosystem the miscellaneous challenge? Because we consider that we are the eyes in the sky of the current ecosystem. We look for the next billion star in the vast space of creativity, not yet detected by the Cardano ecosystem. So, as a challenge, we have a huge responsibility. We see what others are not seeing, and that is a huge responsibility. Key metrics to success successfully found proposals approved by the community that don't fit well in any other challenges. Other is the number of identified possible challenge to be proposed in the following funds based on proposals submitted in the miscellaneous challenge. In short, Catalyst it's a community that seeks to allow access to as many ideas as possible. And there are different entry gates. For example, the different challenge, different challenge in the fund. We are simply one of those gateways. If you are here and the idea first, and because you are already, if you are not here in the idea first, it's because you are already in some way involved in the mechanics of catalyst and in the exercise of thinking about how Cardano can be of practical use to the world. So welcome to all. That's it. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay. I've just got our little telegram group in the chat. I'll just in case anyone's not joined it, feel free to come up there. Okay, well, while we're still recording, could we take like a really brief uh, comment from, from anybody opposing about what your challenge is, what's it called, and what does it what does it do? My, maybe Michael, do you want to go? Sure, thank you. Um, our our challenge is called Study Buddy 3.0, and what we'd like to do is actually arrange. Uh, learning groups, like people within the Cardano community who are learning about something and facilitate a learning experience uh, as get them working together as peer validators. And this feeds into a, a decentralized assessment. But we like to, we would like to actually bring people into actual learning groups, uh, uh, the real people really learning stuff. And we have a, a model for, for uh, facilitating that. Sounds brilliant. Simon, do you, do you want to go? Do you want to you yeah. think you have put a challenge in? Um, I did get around to it in the end. Yeah, I wasn't sure to put it into nation building or into miscellaneous, but it crosses too much stuff that isn't in nation building. Um, so basically the proposal is called the future of democracy part one, because I'm putting three proposals in across different challenge funds. And I'm also putting in a uh, fund nine challenge fund proposal as well for a, a bigger piece of work. Um, the one that I'm putting into miscellaneous is a sort of discovery piece on understanding the user requirements for smaller democratic organisations like cooperatives and community groups and what they need to function as a business um, to put the user requirements and the user journeys in, basically the use case mapping. Um, that's what's coming into here, but it's going to involve going out to communities and actually bringing in organisations in. We don't want to build for the community, we want to build with the community. So it was a key thing for me to actually come back and say, you know, get 20 or 30 organisations to work with and bring those into Cardano as we start building out the system. So, yeah, I won't talk about the other projects because they <laughs> take me all night to get through them all, but that's, the, that's what's coming into miscellaneous. That's fantastic. Sounds really much, much needed. That's yeah. a great idea. John, have you got a proposal that you're putting into NISC? Yeah. Do you want to tell a, a little bit about it? Yeah, I put two proposals. Um, the first one is about decriminalization and decentralization of uh, psychedelics through the process of selling NFTs to, uh, well, I explained it in the proposal a lot clearer, but basically if two people are talking, I was thinking that the price increases if the conversation is more productive and therefore if you sell NFTs of those parts of the conversations, it encourages um, more productive dialogue. And so, yeah. And then I've got one in developer ecosystem that I just came up with yesterday, but I was thinking that Project Catalyst should be, uh, like we should be selling a product to idea scale. Like they'd be the perfect candidate to upgrade from web two to web three and we could build the process as we're using the process, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that's it. Does. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, a few proposals um, going in in that sort yeah. of area at the moment. What's up? Yeah, it's true. There's quite a few um, proposals. I've seen a couple because mine touches on catalyst replacement, but there's um, Dan Kimball has got a proposal in the interoperability. Bottom up. 
that's basically yeah the bottom up one about yeah. replacing catalyst with I can't remember the tool set, but it's in there anyway. You can find it. Yep, that's um, all I want. Even though, even though I have got a proposal in MISC called QA DAO Oversight of Catalyst Circle Version 2, we're currently funding do oversight of Catalyst Circle meeting them, um, summarise the time stamp them and make them easier make them easier for people to search and read because obviously watching a two-hour meeting is a lot so we've put in a proposal into miscellaneous because that is the really the only challenge it fit into to continue doing that value work and tell you a little bit about how it's growing and how popular it's becoming so we haven't watched any of the um oversight um stuff go and have a look and have a little look at the proposal and see what you think. Is there anyone else here who's got a proposal in as well? I'm not sure if Tom, have you actually got one in or? I, I don't have one in miscellaneous um, yet. I, I have a college buddy who's an artist who's approached me about developing uh, uh, an NFT for farmers. Um, working it in with uh, carbon um, issues and also supporting farmers. Uh, that may get in since uh, the time frame has uh, expanded. I, I do have one um, Cardano for seniors, which is in uh, expanding community hubs. So I don't want to talk about it here, um, but please go visit it. Please go visit it. And, old farts like me, it's hard to get onboarded into this uh, community and even learn about uh, DeFi. So along what Michael's doing, it's kind of an educational um, system. So, anybody else? Hey, I have one proposal. I, provide, I present one proposal in miscellaneous, but it's not it's not, uh, not finished yet, really, because uh, I think that my proposal can, can be in other challenges. It can be characteristics of, of, of challenges. So it's in, in progress for the moment. So I'm, I have only the, the, a few pieces, but it's not complete. In, in the next days, I'm gonna uh, I'm, I'm gonna complete the task. But for the moment, it's, it's only a few words and no more. I guess we could on record then, couldn't we? Since um... It's basically just us chickens now. I'm sorry, Vanessa, I didn't catch that. Do you want to stop the recording or do you want to maybe do a deeper dive into some of the proposals? I think we could. I think we could probably, yeah, we could probably stop the recording. Okay, I will pause. And are you are you thinking of proposing in miscellaneous? Have you got a challenge already in this challenge that you'd like to? Um, hi, Vanessa. No, no, I haven't uh, got a proposal in the challenge. I really wanted to see what the miscellaneous section was all about, so that's why I thought I'd join. Cool. Um, <laughs> oh. We can say it's miscellaneous, if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's basically the place for things that don't fit anywhere else because they're so <laughs> new or so exciting or so amazing that catalysts, yeah, that's kind of what it's here. Well, has anyone heard of Axie Infinity? Have you heard I, of Axie Infinity? Uh, I haven't personally know anyone else. Are you going to tell us about it? Maybe. Axie Infinity is a game on Ethereum. 
Um, it's an NFT game, and it's the largest NFT game in the market at the moment. Um, I'd like to bring Axie Infinity onto Cardano and do what they are doing, but do it on Cardano. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, I've even got a name for it. Adaxi. Ada Axie. Ah, Ad Adaxi. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm not sure whether it goes into on-chain gaming, on chain gaming miscellaneous or grow africa or i kind of want to do things for all of those categories so i don't know where i fit what would be yeah gaming is probably going to be a good but without like seeing the detail of what you're planning to do i wouldn't want to say that categorically but Sure, sure. I guess the question the question would be, why do you think it wouldn't fit in in gaming? Or I wonder if there's anything about cross-chain collaboration. Do you have to collaborate with Ethereum in order to bring this game to Kano? No, you don't. I don't have to, but I'm thinking that it might be a uh, interesting component to utilize the Cardano cross-chain capability and allow other chains like Axie's chain and Ethereum to bring those assets over and use it in our game on a Cardano. So there is some cross-chain opportunities there that I like to explore, but um, that's when uh, we have a team of programmers and people working on the on the systems. Um, I think that's it's probably too early to think right. about cross chain at the moment. Right. Right. I really need to put together a team first. I need to get some designs first so I can show yeah. in my proposal the possibility of what I'm proposing. I mean, this is a thing sometimes with MISC is that people put something in miscellaneous when it's just the start of something that they're doing. And, you know, when people have got a big proponent and they often up into smaller elements. Mm, so yeah. that seems to be kind of what happens is that people put a little, almost like a little taster and get that funded and then they'll go on to another challenge for the main bit. so I don't know if that fits but yeah my first thought is that maybe what you're doing is going to be a game challenge and it would find more of a home there but sure, I, sure. I don't know until you know until we no that's good advice Vanessa thank you uh hey gang I have the new Hi. Um, uh, do you pronounce your name Josco? Joshko, Yoshko, I'll answer to anything. <laughs> okay, Yosko, okay. Um, uh, could you explain your project again uh, or just, just very briefly for me? Um, I have uh, been playing the Axie Infinity game for the last six months. And it's a game on Ethereum. And uh, because of Ethereum fees, uh, Axie Infinity have built their own sidechain called Ronin. So they can do transactions in a cheap way. And um, they want to become a blockchain company now rather than a play to earn company with NFTs. So um, I'd like to do what they are doing, but do it on, on Ada and Cardano. Have okay, you heard that of sounds... Infinity Newman? Say that again? Have you heard of Axie Infinity? No, 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 no. I don't have too much of the gaming, uh, the gaming thing. Um, That's all right. I played an old educational, and actually an old game, uh, World of Warcraft, way back when with my uh, educator friends. Oh, we just lost Michael. Um, uh, 
but yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So I, I get, uh, and, and how do you feel about your proposal? Or do you feel confident as it is now, or? I haven't created one yet. I'm just looking, uh, I'm here at miscellaneous to see where, um, what the opportunity here is and how my ideas would fit into and where. Okay, so what do you think the objective of the project would be? Um, like, how, yeah. I'd like, to, I'd like to create a new blockchain category called Learn to Earn. Uh, yeah. So get rewarded in crypto for learning games. Oh man, Michael is just here. He's our he's our educational expert. Oh um, really? Right. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. He uh he has a uh, uh a couple of education uh, uh profits, but uh projects, proposals out. But oh, really? okay, okay. So learn to earn and and you've got kind of a model of the game. Um have you looked over at the uh I mean I'm sure you guys have have you guys went through the, because our first sort of thing, and it's the first thing that would uh, would sort of filter out or uh, discount the the proposal, no matter how good it is, um, yeah. is if, if it fits, you know, I'm sure that you guys have talked about that. Yeah, that's So basically, I would definitely look over because we do have a gamer uh, channel uh, challenge yeah. this this fund. We and do. So that might be a good spot. Yeah, but no you know, at the moment, so I thought I'd come and see some other. Oh, yeah, lenses. that's right. <laughs> so, the um, uh, you know, one thing that makes it more miscellaneous and less game, and I don't know what your background is, but it could be about um, finding uh, like doing the research or the uh, like some preliminary uh, and, and not, not creating an entire play to earn game or creating another blockchain but doing something in that ecosystem and finding collaborators. So that's sort of the, that's sort that's of one way. Think. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So if you make a proposal it. like that, let's say something, yeah. you know, that might, that might really fit here. Um, no, you know, investigating you. or, or uh, uh, what do they call it? Actually, Vanessa may have mentioned this, uh, uh, literature, literature, it's like when you do uh, the big. Say it again. What were you asking? Sorry, I missed it. Was question. there's a term? There's a term for uh, literature review, a lit review. I think it's called lit review. In the beginning of a research okay, paper, yeah. they do this thing called yeah. a lit review, and that might be yeah. something, Josco, that uh, that our community would really be into. Like, if you're interested in play to learn, and the mm -hmm. gaming community. You could do like a lit review or some foundational research document on the gaming community or try to collect collaborators or, uh, collaborators or, you know, outline the categories. You could do some preliminary research. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your background? Do you have an educational background or a business background? Um, uh, I've got some uh postgraduate studies that I've done, um, but uh, I'm more of an entrepreneur than anything. Okay, okay. Yeah, so maybe either this lit review or a, uh, the, I think the business equivalent is a competitive, a competitor, competitive analysis or, oh, yeah. needs, or needs assessment. You would say why? Needs why? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, needs analysis might be the thing. So that might be, and then with a smaller budget, because if you, if you, you know, that might be something that's easily funded and very clearly understood by the CAs. And now this is something that uh, I'm sure we may have talked about before, but, but really when you're building this proposal, you've got a couple of different audiences. You got the first audience, which is us, the larger community, and you want to, uh, hear uh speak with like collaborators and people to refine your proposal and mm. then and then it's really important to, to pull it down to make it work for the cas and the cas have like a, a kind of a set process to look at the impact feasibility and auditability uh so right. if you can 
you know, look through the the paperwork and really just pretend you're a CA. And and I think even addressing the CAs, you know, dir- directly, which is kind of the new format, which they help with. Um, okay. And then once you pass the CAs, then you have to go to the voters. The voters need something that's clear and like meaningful. You almost need like clickbaity type of stuff. Mm. And, um, you know, a, a headline. Headline is super important because that's the you know, you're scanning 200, 200 proposals. And so you got to have like a really good uh, headline, you know, that is, you know, st- that stops, you know, that stops the scroll. Um, and then a good problem statement. And then I think the team is the, the problem statement and the team is what the, what the voters see. I don't even think they see the solution, which is weird. Uh, um, so that's, Wait, that's my, th- that's my general. That's my general pitch to proposals. So, Joe Aiden, how are you? Oh, good. This is John. <laughs> okay. But, but I'm good. But did you just say the solution doesn't even show up? I yeah. I don't think. I I think in the voting in the voting app, the voting app is a little wonky. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I've done. But that. but. It's oh, did you, John? Did you vote last? Uh, have oh. you voted in the proposal? Uh, I haven't since fun four. I kind of took a hiatus. You know, I did this similar thing. I I, I took the summer off and came back for uh, fun yeah. uh, six, which I didn't vote in, and then fun seven, I was full. full yeah. Time. Uh, did so the, so we're just sort of talking about general advice um and uh vanessa or tom yeah. you can jump in as as you like um john you you have done a you've really gotten in there and uh <laughs> uh i mean you are a promoter a natural promoter i think really okay i mean well, don't you th- <laughs> i'm doing my best yeah 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 i don't think you're holding <laughs> back which is great which is great you know yeah i mean tell me if i need to calm it down though like i, I almost you were... i almost got a i you know i woke up one morning and there was a post <laughs> there was this huge wall of of comments i was like oh my goodness it's just blown up and then it was and i didn't quite understand what your what your point was with the with the math problem and i was i woke up early and i was like ah, i don't oh, want to do math what's this math, all about I no the math problem is just um that's how many people were in the fund and i just like the fund was worth 500 grand and i just divided it by how many proposals and i was like and then i put that as my <laughs> as how much money i wanted did you did you go <laughs> one by one to every every proposal yep. and uh, that's awesome <laughs> i mean it's like a i figure it's like a quality control too like there are some not submitted on the time but i guess we gave till the 17th now right right but, but yeah, i thought that was it's funny expanded until the 17th and and there's a lot of placeholders uh in, in yeah the challenge fund i i love the math job you did the, the only thing i didn't <laughs> like is everything every notification goes to my email so oh I, I had a lot of job, <laughs> job, had a lot of job emails. <laughs> oh wait you guys get every comment in the challenge yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, I'm sorry. We, we, try to, we try to stay on top so we know what's going on. I'm so. sorry. <laughs> and just I just thought really, I would give one. Just be really honest, here, John. You get the maths wrong the first time, didn't you? <laughs> no, they submitted one after the deadline. Ah. That's why. That, that's what I was thinking too. Like quality control, like. I got a stamp on all the ones that were on time. Hmm. Oh, well, how? Um, so let's talk about your proposal. You ready to you want to chat about your proposal some? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. Is there anybody else that wants to present, though? I don't want to. Don't think so. Go yeah, Hasco is good. OK, yeah, I'd love to talk about it. So you, you heard that little, little speech about, um, about the three criteria that the CAs work with. 
And I'm concerned that your, I mean, it's the concern is that the CAs won't understand and, and or they will give you a low rating. Because if you get a low rating, yeah. then it's super easy for the voters to just be like, you know, yep. um, so what what things do you what things do you you know do you need some advice on or how, how can we help with you know in relation to that i mean i guess the more technical aspect of the nft okay uh because i i guess i'll just go over like the mechanism i had in mind again but it's basically just sure yeah yeah it's basically just uh so it's hard to get productive conversation politically. So if it is an NFT made of like the YouTube video interaction or whatever with the government, then it has a market value. And so the more productive market or the more productive NFT conversations will be bought for more theoretically but i don't know the technical aspects to bring that into fruition i i, th I think wow that's a pr productive conversation at, as an nft and the more productive it is the higher value it is it's pretty philosophical yeah well yeah yeah well that's that's okay that's okay um well keep go keep going so so you've got <laughs> i mean <laughs> i was just thinking that has so much potential like uh last night i came up with this idea like uh what was it like you know uh, automated market maker yeah, an, an, AM, AMM. an AMM. Yeah, automated yeah. market maker. Like, if you have a conversation with a lot of people, everybody could be like a token within a liquidity pool where basically the AMM is the audience and the, the person who has the more productive conversations, their token will be valued more. But... Yeah, that's probably way too far. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what my my colleagues think, um, but it, it it's it's I, miscellaneous. I think it's it is miscellaneous. It is definitely <laughs> miscellaneous, and it would be great. I mean, because okay, okay. So here's my. This is just my. And please don't take offense or any. You know, or you know, no, like I, no. you know, I'm I'm super happy. I, I don't think that it. you're in the offense the offense culture. But no. it may be, it may be good or bad to make your proposal a, a referendum or just saying fund me as a as a as a uh, fund. It's like a personal thing. It's just like these are the ideas. Um, so that's on one thing. I think that people will either yeah. like you or not like you. Vote for you in the popularity contest. They're like, oh. I know Joe Aiden. Let's let's get him. Uh, let's get him some funds because he's got some great ideas. So, I mean, if that's, that's what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. If that's what you want to do, that could be like your angle. Or on the opposite end, you want to. Okay. And this might be difficult for you, bro. Um, <laughs> to tamp down, to tamp down your personality and say, "Look, you're just funding this." nft idea and it could yeah. be so basically i mean and this may be totally wrong this may be totally totally wrong um you can get specific in your in your proposal and say i just want to do this one thing or you know you could make it about any of the myriad things like you could just make it about um and the reason why I'm saying this is because of that, because of that filter of impact, feasibility. Oh, can you go over it again? Yeah, yeah. So these are the three that the CAs judge for. Yeah, yeah. And actually, let me bring up some notes so I can. And we got somebody new in the chat. Hey, John. Hi. Juan Newman's looking for his notes there. 
I'm just going to say that if I was assessing the proposal, I think it's really cool. I love it. I like this idea of kind of a, a way to evaluate productive conversation, but I would want to uh-huh. first of all explain how you assess what is productive and what your standards are and who does that assessing. Well, the That's market. Want. Yeah. And are you going to give any guidelines at all or are you going to just leave people to just... I mean, I don't think you can. Sorry, the last part cut off, Vanessa. Oh. Oh, is Vanessa there? Yeah, I mean, I was just trying to say, though, like the market would determine the value i wasn't trying to put any constraints on the uh market i don't know right or criteria like say like who and see this is the interesting thing to me i mean we could talk more about the idea um uh but i think it's more important to sort of talk about the like how to how to get it into this format or or to nor because i I could i mean I, i think that would be a great conversation of because the way I understand a market, it's just like, does this thing have value? Okay, here is a, here is a conversation between a uh, decriminalization, freedom of nature, you know, uh, uh, a proponent and a and a government official, and you know maybe it's just like a meme or a graphic, and people say, oh, that's worth this much, and so they'll buy it. And then they'll say, oh, no, it's not worth that much. So they'll sell it or, you know, but there there's some mechanic in the marketplace, which is which could be used for this type of discussion or format, you know, but it's yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't my brain, my brain sort of runs out of bandwidth it's, you know, it's at some point that stuff because it's brand new, <laughs> brand new. I mean, I, I don't think it's ever been done. Right, John? I, mean, this, I have this no idea. idea. It's a, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm hoping. I'm hoping, but yeah. I mean, so when people look at your proposal, and John, I, I don't know what your proposal is, um, uh, but this may be of uh, of good use to you. Actually, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and you know, explain just a few few sentences about what your your proposal is? And Sure. I'm John Woodard. Um, I'm CEO of Wolfram Blockchain Labs, which is a subsidiary of Wolfram Research. Um, oh. Our proposal is about uh, DeFi research. Um, John, I think you read our proposal and commented on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's that's basically what it's about. It wasn't funded in the last one where there were a couple of DeFi categories. So that's why we um thought of putting it in the miscellaneous challenge you, oh that's wonderful oh. Yeah. uh could i just ask a question of course yeah um so you had the proposal that mentioned like imagination and real fi is yep. that right yep yeah could you go into the imagination aspect a little more like what yeah sure so i think like a lot of it is around um one we have an economist on our team who actually works in complementary currencies sorry my cat is like about to have a fit here (laughs) um (laughs) work on complementary currencies so complementary currencies or they're called local currencies sometimes um are basically like the best way to think about it are like scripts in like a mining town where like they would just issue their own currency or there's like currencies like in i guess berkshire mountains they have like their own local currency and it's the the idea behind local currencies are you can have a positive sum gain by having a lot of local economic interaction and so this thing with blockchains that are incredibly interesting are that you could have local currencies across the world that could um, be focused on particular things 
using like on, for instance, Cardano. So here are these kind of what we would call like more real fi areas where um, more real finance areas that are not zero sum areas. That a lot of the, the DeFi things that are on blockchains now um, that are services that people are kind of excited around are more speculative and they're zero sum. Essentially, it's just people trading back and forth, taking each other's money. Whereas if we look at things like complementary currencies, um, people could actually improve because essentially you could create your own currency and then issue currency and you could have things where, for instance, um, Leanne has done stuff in uh, Kenya. And like, so say you, every day you go to the market and you have your vegetables um, that you sell. And at the end of the day, you have leftover vegetables. Now those vegetables, you may have to like throw them away otherwise, right? But if you could discount them in some way or, or sell them through local currency where now you're encouraging um, people to, rather than barter, they can buy and sell more efficiently. Now everybody kind of wins. So there are things like that when you look at what can be done kind of in the real world that promotes, um, again, like positive outcomes where we all win. Um, those are kind of the things that, that she's interested with in leading this proposal to, to do. And she's um, done a lot of other stuff in this area and worked with other projects and now is working on blockchain projects as well. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. Um, that's kind of more of the project. And like, we, we do have the proposal and actually have links to other um, research that um, we've, we've done and we've um, participated in. Does that give you a better idea of what it's about? Absolutely. Yeah. But I was just going to yeah. ask, uh, you had the proposal that like led to a different site when you, you gave me the link, I think? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, the, the because, UBI? Yeah, so UBI is and on she, there too. She's because, an economist? Yep. And she believes exactly. that? Yep, exactly. Okay. Because it's the awesome. same thing. Like, that's another area yeah. where um, people, like, it's... Go ahead. Or, sorry. Uh, I was no, just going to say that, like, like, I live in the suburbs, and so there's maintenance. The roads, the trash pickup all that maintenance is just crazy and so i just think and nobody grows their own food everything's brought in from other areas like mm -hmm. none of the labor is done in the suburbs and so i think universal basic income will allow people to think more locally because they can get their product within their same like mm -hmm. area and like your example for the food, like you have to find someone local because it's going to go bad. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, there, yeah. there are a lot of things like that. And like when you when you don't have to barter anymore, you can use an actual currency. And then the thing with blockchain that's amazing is that you can actually track the outcomes again of mm -hmm. of what people are doing. So it's kind of like people have been people have had local currencies, non-central bank currencies for, you know, hundreds of years. So this is kind of this um, ability to take that and like put that into overdrive because you could have all sorts of uh, things that people use and think about things more as like, as like tools rather than like um, kind of people just, just using things to just speculate. So that, that's kind of the, the overall kind of ideas like here are these different ideas that could be positive some kind of um outcomes rather than like um kind of um things where people are just kind of engaging in speculation but i love it john that is wonderful wonderful both johns uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> um so i uh we only i just got the message we only have about eight minutes left um uh, Mr. Woodard, do you have any other, do you, is there something that you need from us? Uh, so or is there any burning question? Yeah. One, is this the right kind of category? Because 
DeFi is kind of mentioned in other categories, but this is more leading toward like research and idea and community kind of generation resulting in um, papers with and, and leading with someone who's an economist, so has plenty of background and research and like really vibrant ideas, but it's not like, you know, um, I mean, it, I could kind of see like taking kind of um, a contrarian view on it. I could see, oh, well, that's DeFi. So DeFi automatically goes, you know, in X category. Well, I think it's not a D app. So you're not building. Mm -hmm. It's not anything with that. It's not a game. It's not a business. It's not lobbying. It's not mm -hmm. uh, you know, open standard. No, I think it is. I think it, I think okay. it fits here. Yeah. Okay. It, Excellent. And, and I don't think it's too big. I mean, what is the outcome or the, the, the sort of KPI? Um, so that's another area where we're having like difficulty, but I would say it's one, it's making sure that um, as far as completion, that um, we complete kind of the, the goals of, of delivering papers. So not only is it like, kind of leading community discussions to get more feedback on what folks would see in the Cardano community and having that kind of led and interact by an expert on our team, but then also publishing case study results. Yeah, um, okay. Which will end up, I think, being hopefully influential in the very small academic circles <laughs> of people who are working on like complementary currencies and these things, um, which is, in our opinion, super important because if um, Cardano could onboard, you know, academics doing research, then it would be amazing because people are doing complementary currencies with paper right now and have done that for hundreds, you know, of years. Right. And they should be doing it with wallets um, yeah. on, you know, smartphones. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The, I, I do under, I do kind of understand that like the currency uh, that this research has been going on a long while and maybe mm -hmm. not hasn't because ex, ex, technology is all about new affordances, new things that you can do. Right. Um, uh, and, you know, maybe the blockchain, you know, is like the missing piece that some researcher had, you know, was just needed from back in, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Right. Um, like, why did, why did the scripts, the company scripts, why did that all go bust? You know, was it because of transparency and non-audibility? Mm -hmm. Was it because well, they didn't I have... I forgot there's this company, um, and I wish Liam was here, but they're basically, there's this huge company that actually does this behind the scenes. And uh -huh. they issue, I think it's about like a 10% discount. And companies actually buy the discounts from this company and um, I'll have to look, I'll have to, I will, I'll put it posted on the, um, the Telegram channel. I'm on the Telegram channel, but it's yeah. like, basically these things kind of exist already. It's just that we don't talk about them, think about them, see them. And they're natural things for um, blockchain communities to kind of take over because the technology, our technology is better. Right. Like just, okay, so just from a technology standpoint. I love it. I love it. I hope that we keep up this conversation. I, uh, I've got some friends that are, are, are way into this and it is just like, it, it will be part of the new economy. I mean, those lessons will be learned. And that is that, and that leads me directly to this, this, my little spiel about, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the CA. So basically you're going to have to get past me and my cohort, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, which are the CAs, these community advisors, and they assess your, your, your program, uh, your proposal. And so one of the, and they do it on three criteria, impact, auditability, or clarity, and feasibility. Um, okay, they're going to close in a little bit. Um, so I will send some stuff out to you, but basically it means um, aligning the proposal in, into those categories. And, and I don't know if my colleagues uh, say about this, but we could, you could just write something directly to the CAs and say, hey, CA, this is my impact. This is how it uh, achieves these goals, my impact goals, my auditability goals, and my feasibility goals. Um, 
uh, you know, best, best of luck. I will send this out, out to you and, and basically, uh, um, explain the, my process. And I think it's pretty generalized. Most of the CAs will just go through and say, does this proposal identify a problem that needs to be solved? You know, miscellaneous mm -hmm. is kind of interesting because we don't, we our, our our problem is something that doesn't fit in other categories. So you have to, you know, describe the problem that you're going to solve. Uh, right. And then auditability have like defined successes and feasibility, which is like the budget is right. The, um, the, uh, 